This is the Content Marketing Podcast, episode number 137, an interview with global business celebrity Jeffrey Hazlett about his new book, Think Big, Act Bigger. Hello and welcome to the Content Marketing Podcast. This is the show where we help you attract and retain business through the power of quality content. I'm your host, Rachel Parker of Resonance Content Marketing, and today is August 27th, 2015. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining us today. Just a reminder, the Content Marketing Podcast is live on iTunes and on Stitcher, so if you're listening to this episode on the blog, you can click on over and subscribe. And of course, if you use a different app for your podcast listening pleasure, we also have an RSS feed, and I will provide that link in the blog post. Last week, we talked a little bit more about B2B blogging. Specifically, we helped you understand how to segment that B2B audience to make sure that your content is as focused as it can be. If you happen to miss that episode, feel free to check it out on iTunes or Stitcher or via the RSS feed. This week, we welcome a very special guest whom I have been dying to have on this show. Jeffrey Hazlett will be stopping by to talk about his brand new book, Think Big, Act Bigger. But first, it's time to check in with our news feed for this week's rundown of News You Can Use. Well, if you were just getting used to the idea of Periscope, guess what? There's already a new kid in town on that live video playing field. This is a new app called Blab. Yes, B-L-A-B. Uh, their, and their web address is blab.im. M is in marvelous. Um, it is being billed as a video chat app. And what it does, it combines, combines some of the features that you see in Google Hangouts with some of the features that you find in Periscope. Um, and the way Blab works is you can have, um, if, you, if you see the, the homepage of your, of your Blab, of your, of your chat, there will be spaces for four video feeds. So you can have like a checkerboard of four different, um, different people on the screen at the same time. And then the owner of the chat can decide to let new chatters in or um, switch the cameras or mute people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, you sign in with your Twitter ID. And what's interesting is that Blab actually pulls in the Twitter stream because, you know, it will have the Twitter IDs of everyone who's participating. And if you tweet with the hashtag Blab, then it will pick up those tweets and feed them into a news feed, which, you know, I'm kind of kind of surprised Twitter hasn't shut that down because obviously they're they're trying to compete directly with Periscope. But anyway... So basically what Blab is, it's a, it's, a clo- it's a limited conversation that can be made public. So you can say, I want to have these four people with, you know, show the cameras on screen, let them talk on screen, and then let other people observe as if they were watching, you know, uh, watching a live feed. Um, so they could have some really interesting applications. For example, if you wanted to get some experts together, you want to grab four experts in your industry and create a virtual panel and schedule your Blab to discuss discuss a topic that is in that is um, foremost in your audience minds this would be a great opportunity to do that so again the app is called blab the website is blab.im and um, it's quite new so if you have a chance to skip on over and check it out let me know how it goes Okay, not a whole lot going on in social media this week, but an interesting piece on the SEO side of things. And, you know, remember back in April when we were all talking about mobile getting, about how Google was updating its algorithm to, um, and if your, um, if your site was not optimized for mobile, then you're a toast and you're going to lose all your rankings, et cetera, et cetera. Well, a, some folks have done an informal study over the past few months since this, um, development came about and mobile getting is happening but probably more slowly than we thought at least this what this study would indicate um let me give you some details search engine land reported that a study by a company called MoveWeb, that's M-O-O-V-W-E-B, and they tracked 1,000 important e-commerce keywords across a range of industries to see how 
the new algorithm affected the rankings. And what they did is they actually did searches for these keywords and tallied what percentage of the top 10 results were in fact mobile friendly sites. Um, and one thing that they found was that the results really varied by industry. So for example, in retail, 80% of the top 10 results were mo indeed mobile-friendly sites, whereas, for example, in transportation, just over 65% of those results were mobile-friendly. So, um, you know, nothing really earth-shattering, but I, I was surprised to see that those numbers were not higher. I would expect to see, you know, 95 96% of those top space-getters being um, mobile-optimized uh, sites, but um, and and it was the majority in most cases. But I, I just thought they would be higher. Now, this is not a get out of jail free card. Okay, if you have been procrastinating in getting that site optimized for mobile, um, you still need to do that because remember, this is not just about Google. This is not just about getting that all important search traffic. It's about people. And if people are on a mobile device, and remember, we can access mobile devices anywhere and we're likely to access them anywhere whether we're at home or at the office or yes indeed in a place where we can't get to a computer and if someone comes to your website and it's not optimized you know they're not going to bother with the pinching and zooming and navigating you know they're going to um get frustrated and, and forget all about it or go on to another site. So moral of the story is you still need to do it, but um, but you still have time. The, the mobile geddon that we were all predicting is going a little bit more slowly than we thought. Okay, speaking of SEO, it figures very prominently in our content hit of the week. This is a fun post called the 100 most expensive keywords on Google. Well, this was written by Lindsay Kolowich over on the HubSpot blog. And, you know, whether or not you do pay-per-click advertising, it's really important to know what's going on with keyword pricing for your SEO. You know, when you research those keywords and key phrases, number one, you want to know which keywords are the most popular. But number two, you want to know which ones are the most competitive. Because ideally, you want to find keywords that people are searching for to get to your product or service, but that are not that other their competitors are not necessarily jumping on the bandwagon. So, um, so this pricing, you know, looking into the Google Keywords tool and finding out the pricing can be very helpful. So what, what this study was about, uh, SEM Rush, which is an SEO company, they teamed up with WebPageFX to figure out which words have the highest price tags across all industries, you know, which ones are most expensive, industry neutral, who, you know, don't care, don't care what it's about. We want to know which ones bring the highest price tags. Um, and it's, it's an interesting list. You might want to click over, especially if you geek out over this stuff like I do, and just see what those 100 keywords are. Now, I will provide the link, but I will share with you a couple of tidbits. First of all, if you're in the legal industry, pull out your wallet if you're going to be doing PPC advertising. 78% of the top dollar keywords are related to legal services, either, you know, legal or lawyer or attorney or um, what have you, um, related to different kinds of legal services. And the number one spot, the number one most expensive keyword as of right now is held by San Antonio car wreck attorney. Yes, San Antonio car wreck attorney is the most expensive keyword currently on Google, and it will cost you a whopping $670.44 a click. Wow. <laughs> I just I just hope they're they're getting getting enough to cover that and given what attorneys charge, I'm sure they are. But anyway, it's it's a fun list, it's very interesting. Uh, I invite you to check it out and I will share that link in the blog post for today's episode. Okay, that's it for this week's update. If you stumble across something you think might be of interest to your fellow content marketers, please shoot it on over to us so that we can share. Now it's time for this week's Spotlight segment. So excited about this one. Today we are chatting with primetime TV and radio host, keynote speaker, best-selling author, and global business celebrity, Jeffrey Hazlett, about his new book, Think Big, Act Bigger.
As you can probably hear, I am grinning ear to ear right now because I have wanting, been wanting for ages to get today's guest on the podcast. And when I found out he had a new book coming out, I had to invite him on to talk about it, and he graciously accepted. I'm talking, of course, about Jeffrey Hazlett. Jeffrey Hazlett is a primetime television host of C-Suite with Jeffrey Hazlett and executive perspectives on C-Suite TV and business radio host of All Business with Jeffrey Hazlett on CBS On Demand Radio Network, Play It. He is a global business celebrity, speaker, best-selling author, and chairman of C-Suite Network, home of the world's most powerful network of C-Suite leaders. Hazlett is a well-traveled public speaker, the author of two best-selling books, The Mirror Test and Running the Gauntlet. His third book, Think Big, Act Bigger, releases in September 2015. Hazlett is one of the most compelling figures in business today, and today he's stopping by to chat about his latest undertaking. Without further ado, here's my conversation with Jeffrey Hazlett. Hey, Jeff, welcome to the podcast. Well, good to be here. <laughs> Great. Great to have you. Um, so today we're going to be talking about your latest book, Think Big, Act Bigger, The Rewards of Being Relentless. And uh, of course, Jeff, this is your third book, the first two being The Mirror Test and Running the Gauntlet. So how does this book kind of fit into to the lexicon you've been building? Well, it's bigger. I mean, bigger. that's the biggest thing. Yeah, so it's it's bigger, you know. Uh -huh. uh, the first two were just, uh, you know, out of the park home runs, and this mm -hmm. one is just like the grand slam. So mm -hmm. um, we're really excited about it. It's in conjunction with Entrepreneur Magazine. It's the first right. big mainstream book they're doing, and we're glad to be featured in it. You know, we, we've... Uh, just we've seen you know uh, tens and tens and tens of thousands of copies of uh, pre-sales on it already, mm -hmm. which makes it already a bestseller before it comes out. We're going to be in every single you know North American airport. We've got full page ads in Entrepreneur. We've got TV ads on it. We've mm -hmm. got fifty some mi million emails going on about the book. Uh -huh. So we're very excited. Awesome, awesome, great to hear. Now, can you can you give us a kind of cocktail napkin summary of Think Big, Act Bigger, what it's about? Well, it's, you know, the biggest thing that we find in business today is that the most dangerous move in business is the failure to make a move at all. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm doing is talking about, look, how do we overcome some of the conventional wisdoms out there, the self-imposed limitations, mm -hmm. you know, some of the abstract obstacles, and what do we got to do to steamroll them and yeah. ignore them, move over them, move past them, shove them down, kill them, whatever you have <laughs> to do in order to get the stuff done that you really need to do. You know, mm -hmm. we, we're given a choice in business every single day to do the things we want to do and do what's right or to do the things we think we're forced to do. And most of the times it's just nothing but a story. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to do is, yeah, you can do those things. Why aren't you? Mm -hmm. Usually it's because we're living in stories or we take old excuses or, you know, and we just don't do it. And mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not going to do business that way anymore. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. So, so Jeff, who did you have in mind when you wrote this book? Who specifically? You know, it's 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 really every business leader there is out there. Whether you're in a small business or a big business, it doesn't make a difference. You know, I've obviously I've had uh, experience in both. I bought and sold companies uh, well over 250 in my career, over 25 billion in transactions. I've been a Fortune 100 officer, mm -hmm. um, but I've also been a small business owner. I've been a partner. You know, I've been an employee. I've I've done all those things, and 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 so I'm, I was aiming it at all the people. And I'm aiming it at my employees, I'm aiming it at my friends, I'm aiming it at <laughs> the business leaders, I'm aiming at anybody that wants to listen about right. who wants to lead by example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Now, now I have to say, Jeff, if, you're, if your photo was not on the cover and your name appeared nowhere in the text, I would know within five minutes of reading, oh, that's Hazlett. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this book is so you, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it, it, you know, a lot of people who know me, you know, say that it jumps off. And well, as all my books have been like that, that mm -hmm. you know, I, I write the way I speak and mm -hmm. I speak speak what I, I think I should be saying and, and, and usually not just think what I'm saying, what I want to say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's rare that I'll say something I don't mean, but yeah. you know, and that's my husband, well, my employees all know, you don't have to know where I stand, I'll tell you, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's one of the key tenements that you have to do too, is be very clear on what you want to do and how you want to do it and then be very vocal about telling people where you, you know, that that's indeed what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Jeff, why, why would you say this book is so needed in today's business environment? 
Why well, we've you... been we've been losing for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. even I even talk about failure in the book. You know, everybody yeah. like wears it like a badge of courage. Why don't you cut it out? You know, failure is losing. <laughs> don't be a loser. You know, everybody says, well, fail fast. Of course you want to fail fast. What do you want to do? Fail painfully? <laughs> fail long? Mm -hmm. You want it to be, you know, excruciating? You want it to be, be drawn out? Of course. That's like, so I also have another phrase in the book called Tycho. Thank you, Captain Obvious. You know, <laughs> you know it, it's, it, I, I want you to grab failure by the neck. You know, everybody always asks me, what. That, that's one of the questions a lot of people ask me. They say, what's your biggest failure? I said, I don't know. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> you know? You know, they, and, and we treat it like it's some badge of honor. And I'm saying, mm -hmm. stop treating it like a badge of honor. I don't remember my failures very well. I learn from them because I turn them into successes. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to learn, you know, from these things and and move forward and win. That's what we have to do in these mm -hmm. in this world today is win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Jeff, one phrase that comes up over and over and over again in the book is "because I can." Right. And it seems like such a simple approach, but why? Why don't we do things because we can? Because we think we can't. I mean, we think we, there's some reason why we can't do mm -hmm. stuff. And, I, you know, it's like I, I got that phrase because, um, you know, I had offices in New York, L.A., San Francisco, and then in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And people say, well, you have an office in Sioux Falls. And finally I got tired of, you know, saying, well, that's where I'm hometown, blah, 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 blah. And I finally just said, because I can you know, and, and, you know, because literally we can operate a global office from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. What the heck? We can do that. And because I can. So I actually, when I, I bought a building here recently, uh, IBM building in my hometown, and and I actually put it on the inside door as you walk out because we can. And <laughs> and that's the reminder to the employees and the team that's there that, you know, we can do whatever we want because we can. And so let's just do the way we want. And And that's the focus. Why not live like that? You know, you can. You can do. You know, no one says you can. No one says, well, they do say you can't, but no one forces you. No one puts a gun to your head right. and says the, these are the things you can't do. You you mm -hmm. choose to do those things. Well, I choose not to. Mm -hmm. Just like when I go to a fast food restaurant and they ask me to pull forward, no, thank you. I'll wait. You know, <laughs> and, you know, of course, they'll sit up, come to you and knock on the window and say, sir, you're going to hold everybody up. And I go, I don't mind. And I just wait, you know, and, and then pretty soon, you know, the 16 year old manager comes over and the assistant manager comes <laughs> over you know, and, and, and says, hey, sir, you know, what's the deal? And I said, look, we made you made a promise to me. I gave you my order. You took it. I gave you my money. You took it. And now I'm here to get my food. And you're not giving it to me. Ask me to pull over to parking purgatory, for goodness sakes. You know, <laughs> I'm not doing that. And they, well, sir, you're going to hold everybody. Up? I don't care. You know, you didn't offer me, you didn't renegotiate the promise, you know, and and that's, the, you know, I just think we have to hold people accountable mm -hmm. and it's time to think big and act bigger and then, and hopefully reap the rewards of being relentless. And I think that's important for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So part one of the book is called own it. So what do you mean when you tell business leaders to own it? Own it. I mean, just live it every minute of the day. Own your own story. Mm -hmm. Own who you are. Own own the way you walk, you talk, you know, and, and, and really, truly just be, be, be it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I and I tie your success to that. Tie everything. What's the cadence of your business? What's the mood of your business? Mm -hmm. You know, what's it look like? How does it feel? Mm -hmm. So when I say own it, I mean own it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not some separate thing from you. Right. It. it you know, the the company is made up of people, and mm -hmm. they are part of it, so own it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything that you are, just own it. Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. I own who I am. I mean, you know, you know, I, I try to be, you know, I try, you know, it's difficult to be anybody else, hard enough being myself, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I just want to make sure that, you know, people understand that you are who you are, and, and, and that's what you should step into, and that you should be happy with what you are, you mm -hmm. know. Mm-hmm. It yeah. goes to life in general, too. I mean, don't get me started on, you know, uh, being self-aware and self, you know, uh, self-deprecating in terms of, who, you know, what you do. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Gotcha. Um, so you you, st you start off talking about, well, really challenging us to tell bigger stories. And you yeah. use stories a lot in this book. What role do stories and storytelling play in the business leader's journey? I think it's important because I think you can learn through living through others and, mm -hmm. and the stories I help us, you know, because I also think we get into stories, we get into mm -hmm. stories why we can't do things. Yeah. So it's, un, it's important for us to understand stories and, and I think, but stories mm -hmm. are a real great way of us learning. And so I think it's an important thing to do. And I, and I like to tell the stories around things I've done or others have done mm -hmm. and use those as great examples because you, you can see it through other people's eyes. And by doing that, you can kind of live as a, you know, a third party 
hurt a person or hover above it, you know, have an outer body experience watching, you know, how others have done it so that you, then you can go do it. And even when you're talking about yourself, look down and say, geez, that was stupid or, hey, that was great, you know. <laughs> right, because I can. Yeah, because you can. Exactly. <laughs> uh huh. Exactly. Um, you know, one thing that, that really stood out for me um, in, in from that first chapter, Jeff, is that you reveal why you never have and never will do a TED Talk. Can you share <laughs> that nugget with our audience? Well, I mean, I want to really get into the book and understand more. But, you know, that that's not my audience. If you want to hug a tree or change a life or make someone feel good about themselves, then by all means, go do a TED Talk. I'm, mm-hmm. I, but I, my audience is corporate. They're business. Mm-hmm. And, and we're not, you know, for the most part, in, in TED TED Talks, you're not solving business problems. So that's not where my audience is. I like to go where the food is. And the food is, you know, <laughs> the corporations and business and business leaders. That's the reason why I wrote the book. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to see my book or my talk at a TED Talk. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll do respect to TED. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You go where the food is, preferably, ba- preferably bacon, right? Bacon, always got to have bacon. If you put bacon on it, no matter what it is, it's just better. It's just better. It's sizzling. It makes it sizzling. (laughs) There you go. Um, Another thing you say is that if someone tells you that you must do this or that to be successful, tell them to shut up. Yeah, exactly. Do it the way you want to do it. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's funny, Jeff, that that just took me back to a conversation I had a few years ago with someone I I really respected. And this person said, oh, you can't build an agency around content. You need to go full service. You need to hire a design team. You need to do branding and logos and ad campaigns. And I swear to you, Jeff, I could feel on a cellular level, like every cell in my body saying, hell no. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I love all these people who are, you know, experts. You know, and I, look, I consult and give a lot of advice to a lot of people, but, you know, I like to give people options and whatever they whatever they want to do will do right mm-hmm. and and now can it be can you do it a certain way and be more successful faster quicker cheaper you know higher quality yeah okay mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean it's your way so do right. it your way you know i know people who like to you know make their own limoncello rather than buy it in the All store right. mm-hmm. can you buy it for cheaper than you can probably make it yeah is it as good Man, maybe maybe not i don't know it depends on your preference you might like to tweak it. Mm -hmm. It's certainly more convenient than making it yourself, but, Mm -hmm. but yet, you know what? You're making it yourself and therein lies the issue. So do it your way. And that's what I tell people about their businesses. It doesn't mean it's going to be successful or more successful. It might be both might be one or the Mm -hmm. other, Uh, but you know what? It's your way. So do it your way. Mm -hmm. And, and I, especially, you know, I, where I got that line was when I went to a bunch and spoke to a bunch of professional speakers and, and everybody always tells the professional speaker, they have to do this, they have to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's just, a bunch of crap and Mm -hmm. and i just finally got up in front of a room and said no you can do it any way you want i mean i'm living proof of that Mm -hmm. you know because people tell me you know all the time to be more successful in what i do i need to license my product i need to do this well i don't want to do any of that you know i want to i want to do it the way i want to do it and if you don't like it go do it yourself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep exactly um so so part two of the book is is called focus it so the the idea is that once we own it know who we are and what we stand for how do we how do we take the next step and go about focusing it well i think the key thing is the what are the key drivers of your business what are the key things mm-hmm. you want to get accomplished and so it gets back to what are your conditions of satisfaction mm-hmm. and 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 then we're talking about mutual conditions of satisfaction why are you doing what you're doing mm-hmm. and that'll help you get the focus you know or, or and you know an overall in your business but more so you know even if i'm sitting down with the person that i'm supposed to be sitting down to what are the things I need to focus on to get whatever they want so or whatever they need in that conversation? So, you know, even just a simple thing is starting it out with what do we want to get accomplished from this meeting? Right. What do we want to get accomplished from this call? Mm-hmm. Well, then that sets the focus. Then we don't need to talk about the weather. We don't need to be talking about, you know, um, you know where the favorite Italian restaurant is. Well, no, I want to talk about what the things we got to do to get this get the point of the conversation of what we're supposed to be solving. So, mm-hmm. so that's really about the focus. So, you know, find out the things that, you know, what is it we're supposed to be driving or getting accomplished. And sometimes it might be able to make the person feel better. Or sometimes mm-hmm. it might be able to motivate them. Well, great. Then I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, one phrase you, you use that, that gave me a smile is kill the squirrel. Uh, so what, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, that movie up, 
Uh-huh. Remember that movie Up? Yeah. With um, Ed Asner's character, and then there's Do- Doug the Talking Dog. Yep. And Doug the Talking Dog, <laughs> he's always working, and these dogs are always all of a sudden they'd start be doing doing something and talking to you, and then all of a sudden, oh, squirrel, and so they would go <laughs> off, you know. And 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 every day we have those in our businesses, mm-hmm. and so this is about finding those things that get in the way, that the squirrels that that you know deviate us from the things we're supposed to be doing at the time. And it's about kill those squirrels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You also talk a lot about a company's cadence. Um, yeah. Is that how does that fit? In? Is that the same as culture? Is it different? How do you see cadence? Well, I think it's like a mood. It, it's mm-hmm. the cadence is the speed and your okay. speed. The, you know the way in which you operate. And you know culture is certainly part of the culture. Your cadence is certainly part of the culture. But have you ever you you just in some businesses and you see that they hustle. They're mm-hmm. different. They have a different, you know, like armies, they march at different speeds. It's a cadence. Mm -hmm. And you can have a double time, triple time. You can have fast time. You can have, you know, slow time. Mm -hmm. And and so think about stepping back and looking at your business. What's the cadence? Mm -hmm. Do do people answer emails within an hour? Do people answer emails within a day? Do they answer them within the week? Do they answer them not at all? Do, Do the people that are in the office, is it, you know, are they rushing around? Do they have a sense of purpose? You know, all those things lead to the cadence, and, mm-hmm. and I think it's important for you to understand what your cadence is. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, in my own operations, we tend to operate pretty quick, pretty fast on top of things, and I think it's up to the leader, the platoon sergeant or the captain or the colonel or the general to lead that cadence and lead mm-hmm. by example. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You also talk um, in part two about systems. What role do systems play in the in the cadence in the in the bigger paradigm you're talking about? Well, if you don't know which foot to start off on, you're all going to start off on different feet, or at least mm-hmm. half of you will, by, mm-hmm. by and large, you know, by on just on odds. Mm-hmm. So, so what are the systems that help you make yourself much more effective and efficient? You know, wherever you can get things down to where there are more systems and even where you can start to use acronyms or even where you can start to, you know, develop a short language amongst each other Mm -hmm. to where you don't have to redo or go through the same things you've had to do in the past. That's even better way of doing it. So Mm -hmm. system and I get that from my printing days, you know, when I was an old printer and and, you know, you get pretty efficient printing. Mm -hmm. And so because you don't want to have a lot of overage or wasting. You know, and so I like things that are continuous improvement. How can we, you know, it's like after we have a meeting with clients or customers or, mm-hmm. or groups or presentation, as soon as we walk away and get private, I always turn to the team, well, what could we have done better? You know, I always ask that question. It's just a kind of a normal thing. And then we, we talk that through and then put steps in place to make sure that that's what we do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, so once we've gotten through own it and focus it, part three is where the rubber meets the road. You talk about making it happen. You got it, doing it, deliver. Because mm-hmm. if you're not winning, if you're not moving ahead, you're not growing, you're dying. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so that's what you have to be able to do. So, you know, what are the things that you can be thinking of? You know, what are the ways in which you can help move it forward? You know, like saying being in a constant state of awareness, you know, get over yourself and mm-hmm. figure out the things that are around you. What are some... You know, some of the key lessons around obstacles and enemies, you know, find enemies because you want enemies, you mm-hmm. want big ones. And then how to steamroll those obstacles. That's a real important thing. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, whatever's in your way, just roll over it because mm-hmm. that's the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go around it, go through it, go over it, go, you know, whatever you have to do. Whatever just, you have to do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, Jeff, there's a there's a part there's a section in this part called Admitting You Suck, where you cite the example of Domino's Pizza. Why yeah. is that such a powerful story? And what can it's we learn? It's a great from? story. You know, I did that I did that on my television show and it was one night I'm sitting there watching the television and all of a sudden this commercial comes on and it says we suck, our our pizza tastes like cardboard and I'm thinking, What executive signed up for that ad? <laughs> and you know, why would someone put an ad on that would say they suck, that they taste like cardboard. And, and then, you know, what would drive them to make that decision? And what were the results of admitting that and then changing to their new recipe? And then, you know, what's been the response? Well, it was just tremendous, mm-hmm. you know, because how many of us haven't called Domino's late at night years ago, you know, hanging up and then, you know, looking at our watch, hoping that we'd get, you know, they'd be late so we get a free shitty pizza. I mean, <laughs> you know, you know. And and so here they did they they recognized it and then built upon it to say they're going to change it and that's what they did. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yep, great story. It's a good story. It's a great story. There's a lot more to it mm -hmm. and a lot more outcome as, as a result in the book itself, but mm -hmm. it's, it's just one of the best ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you also talk about having a servant mentality, and you call yeah. that the most undervalued leadership component. Yep, yep. So, you know, I always found great, great people have been great servants. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I'm a I'm an usher at church. I might do those things I do. And I try to I try to do the same things for my wife. I know I'm more appreciated when I take care of her, mm -hmm. you know, certain things or my even my children. So mm -hmm. so why don't we do the same thing in business? I always mm -hmm. found no matter how big you think you are, there's always someone bigger. So even if you're the owner of the business, the CEO, the leader of the business, what can you be doing that to serve others? And by, whether it's serving your employees and certainly serving your customers. And if we take that mindset that we're serving others, we just do, I think we just do a better job. Mm -hmm. And we're more in, in, intuitive with the whole process and intuitive with our customers' needs and wants. And therefore, we can extract more value from it as a result. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just in case people didn't get the message in part three, your conclusion is called get off your ass and make it happen. <laughs> well, you know, I, I tend to put it just straight. You know, it's a lot easier. <laughs> Uh, than just saying, well, geez, get out there and do your best. Well, you know, you're not going to get any participating trophies from me. Mm -hmm. You've got to win. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and that's the key thing is, you know, look, I, I've seen a lot of businesses survive, and not because they were the smartest, but because they out-hustled the competition. Mm -hmm. and, and I think hustling is a great part of it. I mean, um, you know, if someone thinks they can out-email me, I'll out-email them. If someone <laughs> thinks they can out-sell me, I'll out-sell them, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I found that, you know, hustling and just getting off your rear end and getting it done is better than waiting for it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Jeff, from, from a kind of a bigger picture perspective, I know here in Houston, you know, we've been hit really hard by the downturn in the oil and gas market. We're seeing a lot of layoffs and some shuttered operations. Is, is there a time to think big, act bigger, and a time to just hunker down and focus on survival? No, every day there's a time to think big and act bigger. Okay. Just be, just be, I mean, thinking big, acting bigger is also about surviving. Mm -hmm. So it's just as much as in, in, in good times as bad times. Mm -hmm. You know, in the worst of the times during 2008, there were some companies that exceeded beyond anyone's expectation and yeah. grew, ex, you know, exponentially. Uh -huh. So, it, that, yes, does, does the downturn have an impact? Sure, it has an impact. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that everything's going to shut down and everything's doom and gloom and everyone's going to go out of business? Uh -huh. No. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And so, so what you have to do is find the things that really make you the greatest, concentrate on them, mm -hmm. and, and, and you know throw all the other things over the ship because mm -hmm. those are the things you've got to concentrate on. And by doing that and making those things happen and not accepting – you know, excuses and not yeah. accepting we've done this before mm -hmm. uh, or we tried that before mm -hmm. and focusing in on the real fundamentals. Yeah. That's always the best time, always mm -hmm. the best time. Mm -hmm. And it's funny you say that, Jeff, because I noticed that since this downturn started, there's been a tremendous um, blossoming of innovation because companies are like, OK, we can't control the price. How can we do what we do more efficient and cheaper? And technology-wise, it's just been an amazing renaissance of, of new ideas. And you've got some great tech businesses down in the mm -hmm. Houston area, without question. Mm -hmm. And a lot of even, you know, even small businesses that are out there that are doing really well. I, we use a, a, a tech developer that's down in the Houston area for the, a lot of the work that we do. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some really great talent there. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Not to mention my cousin lives there. Oh, really? <laughs> exactly. All right. <laughs> Good deal. So, so I want to I want to switch gears just a bit because you know, master marketer that you are, I cannot let you leave without talking specifically about marketing. How can we as marketers, um, especially say you know the marketing manager within a larger organization, how can we take to heart the think big, act bigger philosophy as part of our specifically as part of our marketing mission? Well, it's it's about concentrating on the things that are going to get you where you need to go. Mm -hmm. and, and I look, I, I wrote a lot of this with marketers in mind because that's who I used to work with. Mm -hmm. And used to, you know, like, let me give you a good example. So I remember when I was the chief marketing officer of Fortune 100 company. Mm -hmm. But, oh, 
January 3rd. Our fiscal year started January 1st. And about January 3rd, I saw some idea and I said, you know, we should really do this. This would be a great thing. Mm -hmm. And it probably cost us 20 or $30,000. Now, I was CMO of a billion a dollar company, billions, um, as a Fortune 100 company. You know, and I, and I turned to the team, let's get this done. And they turned to me and said, we can't do it. I said, what do you mean you can't do it? They said, well, we don't have the budget for it. I said, what? This is the 3rd of January. What, what do you mean? Every dollar in a $17 billion company is already allocated, and it's only the third day of January? Are you nuts? <laughs> you know? That, so that's what I'm talking about. It's yeah. like, you, by the way, let's imagine it was allocated, and every dollar was allocated. If this is a better idea that will get us bigger results, then we should do it. Then that means we change and we make a choice mm -hmm. around those things. And nothing's locked in stone. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 so those are the things I you, you talk about. You know, we again, it's a story. They're stories, yeah. and we got to get over these stories because they kill. They kill us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Jeff, that, that brings up another question. It, in today's environment, where we have just reams of information available at our fingertips, do you think that that kind of generates a, an analysis paralysis that keeps us from from taking those steps? Sure, just like no information will do the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, you know, too much information and no information or just the right information will. Mm -hmm. You know, again, can you make great decisions with no information? Sure, you can have, make great on your gut. Mm -hmm. can, you, can, can you make bad decisions with lots of information and the right information? Absolutely, because you can poorly execute. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't let those things get in your way again. Those are all stories, all excuses, mm -hmm. and things that just that's that's what kills us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like no making no move at all is the biggest danger, sure. the biggest failure that you could ha you could have in a business. Mm -hmm. At least if you're moving forward, you're not you know you're not stagnant. Mm -hmm. It might mean you're not still not moving in the right direction, but at least you're moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. So I want to talk a little bit about specifically about content marketing because you know no one is more plugged into the the C suite those C-suite executives than you are. How is, how is content being viewed among those executives? Are they still seeing things like blogging and social media as a nice to have, or is it starting to sink in? Well, it, it sinks in in some, some levels. I, I, and without question, I mean, we do look at the C-suite pretty heavily through our C-suite network mm -hmm. and we're about to announce, you know, some C-suite social media awards and, and, and we, we ascertain how C-suite is using the social media mm -hmm. and we find out, by and large, they pretty well suck at it. So, um, but that doesn't mean there aren't some that get it. There are a number that do get it and they understand mm -hmm. that this is a new medium for being able to talk to your customers or sell mm -hmm. to your customers or a, a better word for that is to engage your customers. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and, and the result is more sales. The result is more uh, happier customers. The result is solving problems. You know, mm -hmm. the result is all the good things that are a result of it. You know, even a better understanding, even if you disagree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and they're starting to see that it's been difficult for them to measure, but you know, mm -hmm. does talking to your customers get you good things? Yes. Mm -hmm. Everyone would say yes. Mm -hmm. You, you actually need to have a return on investment where the guy, I call that return on ignoring, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, that's, that to me is just a pretty much a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're getting it. Yeah, well, that's good because, I, I mean, I talk to marketers all the time. They're like, I get it, but my CEO is just, you know, he wants to know the ROI of each individual tweet. And no, <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, you can't, yeah, well, you, you know, you could take a, any action by any person in the company and ask for the same thing. Mm -hmm. And we don't make all those, we don't make actions and results of the company based on those kinds of things in everything we do. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we know to do the right things or to do the right things that don't always have a, a measurable ROI, but we know that they they contribute to the full value of the company mm -hmm. uh, to live in our values. Does that have an ROI on it? Well, in the long run, yes. Does it, you know, to treat other employees as we would treat ourselves, you know, and or living the golden rule, so to speak? Is that an important thing for us to do? Yeah. Is there immediate ROI? No. But does it, it contribute? So those are the things we have to look at. You can't think of them as being a separate marketing tool, but a way of doing business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very good advice. 
Well, Jeff, I know you're very busy these days, going running around talking about the book, and of course you're um, busy with the Hazlet Group and C Suite TV. What is what is next? What's your next big project? Well, uh, right now we're just we're just getting out there and thinking big and acting bigger. <laughs> so that's the biggest thing right now. We're just being relentless about getting the rewards of being relentless. Mm -hmm. So we're out doing the book tour. We're, we're getting it out, making a bestseller. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to push it pretty hard. We're going to end, you know. Uh, uh, just do our very best to to help other businesses grow and and get rich because that's what we think is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Well, the book again is Think Big, Act Bigger: The Rewards of Being Relentless, and um, I believe it's due out September fifteenth. Is that correct? It's September the fifteenth. You should be able you can pre order it now. Okay. It's already trending on Amazon because we're watching all the things go up like crazy, so it's just awesome. And <laughs> so you can reach out and pre order today. And, um, you know, or wait to wait until it comes out either way. Okay. Okay. And the best place to do that is amazon.com. You know, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, your okay. go to your independent bookstore. I love those guys. You're going to be able to pick it up in every airport, you know, that you walk mm -hmm. through. So right. you're going to be seeing it everywhere. It's on, it's on a Kindle. It's on a Nook. It's, uh, it's an, uh, it's an audible book, uh, coming out as an audible awesome. book in about another month. So yeah, jump in. All right, wonderful. Well, I, Jeff, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I thank you for gracing the business community with your thoughts on thinking big and acting bigger. Oh, we can't wait. <laughs> no. Thanks so much for joining us today, Jeff. Really appreciate it. All right, cheers. All right, thank take you. Care. Mm -hmm. Many thanks again to Jeffrey Hazlett for stopping by to talk about his newest book, Think Big, Act bigger. Again, the book is available for pre-order on Amazon.com and something interesting that I just found out, um, of course, the book has been up for pre-order for a while and um, Jeff actually posted on Facebook today that he got some preliminary numbers from Amazon about the demographics of people who are ordering his book. And I think he said like 59.7% or something like that of people pre-ordering his book are women. So women are big thinkers. There you go. You heard it here first. Um, also, if you want to know more about Jeff, go to hazlet.com. That's H-A-Y-Z-L-E-T-T -T dot com. And you'll find out a little bit more about him. And you'll also find the links to his social network. And Jeff is particularly fun to follow on Facebook. He's always doing little impromptu one-off videos. He did just one today about, you know, he had this book, this desk piled high with books that he was signing. And, um, and he's, he's He's just a fantastic guy with a wonderful sense of humor and wonderful energy. So I recommend you go to hazlet.com and follow you follow him wherever you can follow him. Okay, if you want to add to the conversation, I would love to hear from you, and I will give that contact info at the end of the podcast. Now it's time for our content marketing tip of the week. For today's tip, I want to talk about new tools and new platforms. If you recall back in the news feed, we talked about a new video chat platform called Blab. And, you know, when I talk about these new these new platforms coming out, as soon as I do that, I can hear heads being smacked all over, all around our audience. People saying, oh, no, not another one that I have to keep track of. And, you know, as I'm out there talking to colleagues and we talk about new um you know, new platforms and new tools. I, I hear, I see and hear two different extremes. Number one, there's the the go-getter. You know, the new platform comes along, they're all over it, they jump in with both feet, and next thing you know, they're overwhelmed because they've done that with everything that has come along, and they're now, you know, they have too many things going on, and their, their content marketing program is all over the place, and they're a stressed-out wreck because they have too much to keep up with, which may or may not be delivering results. And then the other extreme is they don't want to hear about anything new. They say, no, 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 I don't want to hear about it. La, 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 I can't hear you. Um, you know, they, they don't want to hear about it. They say what we're doing is just fine, and they just stick with what they know. Well, the challenge with that perspective is that what if this new platform takes off, then, you know, they're having to play catch up along with everybody else. So, you know, the, really the thing to do is – is to just kind of dip your toe in. You know, when you hear about a new tool, a new platform, for example, if Blab sounds like something you'd really be interested in, just test the waters. You know, if you like the idea of doing these panel discussions that everybody can, you can broadcast to everybody, just try it a couple of times. You know, do a couple of test runs. Um, 
know what it is, get familiar with using it, see how your audience reacts, see how they like it, see if they're even interested in it, and, you know, give it an honest try, and that way, if you decide not to make it a part of your strategy, you've at least made an informed decision based on first-hand knowledge. And, of course, if it does work, then, hey, you've got a new tool in your pocket. Okay, campers, that is it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. I want to say thanks again to our special guest, Jeffrey Hazlett. Once more, you can pre-order his new book, Think Big, Act Bigger, on Amazon.com. That will be coming out on September 12th. If you like what you've heard today, please feel free to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or via our RSS feed. And if you really like what you've heard, please leave us a quick review on iTunes. For more information about content marketing, you're welcome to visit our website at resonancecontent.com, where you'll also find links to our pages on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and other social networks. I also invite you to check out our monthly webinar series. Now, our August webinar is actually happening today, um, August 27th at 12 p.m. U.S. Central Time. Now, if you weren't able to join us live and you would like to check out the recording, just let me know and I will be happy to email you the link to that. As always, I like to leave you with a quote, and today's comes from another business celebrity, Andrew Carnegie. He once said, quote, There is little success where there is little laughter, unquote. So there you go. Find something to laugh about today. Again, this is Rachel Parker with Resonance Content Marketing. Thank you again for listening, and we will see you again next week. Take care. Thank you.